Good morning. We uh, we missed last week. We sure did. Which I think that's the first week I have taken off podcasting in almost a year. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So it wasn't like I was sad. It was just kind of <laughs> like my routine is interrupted, where it's like almost like a morning poop. You yeah, know? yeah. I got to do the podcast every week, or else it feels off. <laughs> like that's kind of where I'm at with it now. So. I have a feeling like even if five people were watching, I would probably keep making it. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> it's just part of the day. Which is like, I've always said on Instagram to like other creators, if you're doing content just for you, mm-hmm. it may as well be masturbation. <laughs> right? <laughs> like, it, it, it's if it's not selling or serving anything, then what is it doing? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, like some things are just for you, right? Like you, Oh, for sure. Like... How many times did you used to go for coffee when you were young, you know, and it would be, it didn't matter if no one was watching, right? You're still having a conversation. Yeah, for sure. So I've wondered about the traction of this podcast, (laughs) where it is. It's kind of like, does that bother me or do I care? Or do you think you just keep going? And it's basically two or three people having a coffee. That's it. Yeah. We're here to have a chat. And sometimes, like like this morning, we might roll in here on a Wednesday morning, kind of like in the <laughs> mid-pandemic, going, I don't have a plan for today. I could have just stayed in bed. I could have done some kind of project. Yeah. But here we are. Let's have, a, let's have a chat. Let's keep the routine. Let's do the things. Oh, yeah, exactly. With everything else, especially with everything else out of whack. <laughs> yeah, right. exactly. Um, I had a question for you, though. Yeah. Is there one project you can't wait to get back to working on? Oh, goodness. Like, is there anything in motion that you weren't able to wrap up on terms? Nah. No? Nah. <laughs> I know you were working on that back piece, but it looks like you got it finished. No, the back piece still has some, some shits and bits to Moving it. it out? Yeah. Yeah. What else are you doing with that? No idea. <laughs> <laughs> I got to come over his shoulders or something. I don't know. It's The, the top of his shoulders were such a dramatic cover-up. Like mm. they were, It was this big, scarred north side up at the top of that. Uh-oh. So, honestly, it's, we've already fixed it. I just need to go in and... Were those done over there? Oh, yeah, they sure were. Yeah. Is he over, still going over, over, there? over there? I wonder how many people have looked up on Google Maps the shops close to us to see what shops are talking about (laughs) well there's enough of them around it wouldn't work yeah they're they're disguised in the multitude of shops yeah there's at least 10 Mm -hmm. shops in this area yeah so over there could mean anyone really no so honestly i haven't thought about tattooing and art in like two weeks i've been so busy with house stuff and bike stuff and camping stuff that i've forgotten about tattooing entirely i'm like i don't need to come back to work i can just keep doing my own thing it'd be great pick up another odd job somewhere. yeah exactly <laughs> just going like to a garden center or I'm something done, and... i'm done with these lockdowns i'm going back to electrical here we go yeah it's just electrical scott comes screw, back screw all this which is also a good financial option oh right? absolutely yeah it's got to be pretty close to the same money um with if, these with the, all these lockdowns yeah, exactly. happening yeah i'd make more electrical for sure i mean what I what I guess I would maybe say not for sure, but for maybe. electrical, like it's more of an insured income. Where tattooing yeah, is like exactly. you get on a spurt, you make yeah. some money quick. That's like, right. Tattooing you need to show up and perform every goddamn day to keep that money rolling in. You got to yeah. keep on top of your schedule. You got to keep the right um, cadence and flow to your work life to have a normal life and make these living out of work life. What I think there's a scary um, change and mindset where. You go from hourly pay to, like, yeah, yeah. am I getting paid? Yeah, Like, absolutely. that kind of a mindset. Yeah. <laughs> That's We're, always kind of scared the hell out of me. Whereas electrical, someone else is going to be making sure that you have jobs lined up and you have yeah. places to go. Uh, you're going to do some of your own scheduling and balancing, but generally you're like, nah, I've got, you know, 40 to 50 hours a week of work, no matter what, lined up. And I know roughly what time. I can just roughly, I can make actual plans around it. And just be off then. Yeah. Well, I mean, so, and I'll get to another thing is like when you're in a tattoo shop, like Rocky Mountain, Mm -hmm. like you do have, you have like a hub where work will find you. Oh, absolutely. I do. So like if you were Scott off in the ether somewhere. Yeah. Working in a dungeon. Yeah. Like it's pretty hard to find Scott. Mm -hmm. Unless Scott has a huge social media following. That's right? right. And that's, I think that's, I've seen a lot of tattooers that, are pushing away from social media where mm-hmm. they don't want to do it 
but it's like how how can you be found on your own without it so i have exactly that conundrum yeah because i want to i need to i need to find a way to get my personality and my person into my social media yeah but to me it feels like it feels like an attention seeking activity Mm -hmm. it feels like such a weird thing to try to put it on there but i've got to do it for work and my goal someday is to buy that 100 acres an hour away from any city and have a tattoo shop out there. And for that, I need that following. I need that social media bullshit. Well, as much as I don't want to put the time in and don't want to do that work. You have to become a bit of a, a beauty queen, like that's a pageant it. queen. Yeah, well, yeah. And you know what? One of the biggest things that's it irritates the, the hell out of me that I have no good answer for with being a femoral Remy is mm-hmm. I'm actually a really, like... I'm a really reserved and um, stay at home kind of uh, lone wolf guy in life. I was thinking about just about exactly this. So I spent this last weekend, as I do many weekends, hanging around a decent large group of people, talking super loud, making yeah. a ruckus, getting after it, taking you know taking psychedelics and running around the sure. forest, yeah. doing all kinds of nonsense, starting up loud dirt bikes and things. Here we go. Um, you've always spent your weekend much quieter, yeah, much slower yeah. than that. Yep. Our social media presences yep. show quite the opposite. Yeah, My social media is, exactly. a, is a cricket chirping in the background. And so this is where I take offense, and I guess I understand where it comes from, but when mm-hmm. people are like, oh, you're just doing this for attention, it's like, yeah, yeah it's because that's the only way you can grow a platform. That's right. That's right? right. It, and for no other reason. Because mm-hmm. I have been doing this stuff for yeah. long before I was on social media. Turns out it's just a hobby. Yeah, this has been my well, hobby well, the, for... The, yeah, like the... But the social media is a secondary hobby. Yeah. It's still a, it's still a hobby of its own. It feels as if it's a job sometimes, though. Mm-hmm. But, like, when I get that comment, there's nothing good I can say about it. Because it is true. Yeah. Like, it is, but that's the nature of social media. Mm-hmm. If you're not being an attention-seeking queen yeah. or yeah. whatever, you're not doing well. And I've just got to overcome that. First, I've got to read how to do it properly <laughs> and what to do because I don't... Lee there's... has has pretty well figured it out. Yeah. But I, yeah. Help, I would give Lee tips here and there like yeah. when he would be tattooing me. I'd right. Be like, you know, that I would just tell him little things like that picture of you and your dog was really cool the other day. Mm-hmm. Like, you mm-hmm. just put one of those in every now and then yeah so people want to see a face attached to they the do work. they like, really do they need that or else it's just another black and gray tattoo yeah. and, and i'm and i'm not i don't i don't feel comfortable starting to do that like i'm not the kind of person out there like taking selfies and stuff no, or, like, I know. asking other people to take pictures of me it's just not something that strikes me as a normal thing to do it's like if you want to see what i would do with my social media if i weren't planning on doing like if I weren't growing yeah. and like trying to build a YouTube and all this other stuff, my Facebook is a good example mm-hmm. where I haven't been on Facebook in six months. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah exactly. And if I do, it's like uh, to, uh, I think I shared some of the early Remy show podcasts mm-hmm. to my Facebook, to try and get some, <laughs> I get, I get tagged in something in Facebook one, like once or twice a year. Yeah. So that's my idea of like, social media what i would use it for as a person Mm -hmm. uh where i see ephemeral remy is more of business yeah possibilities uh potential things like that i seen early on with that like a potential to create um some kind of a community-based character so when i I go on we discussed last episode that you're most certainly going into remy's boudoir with this anyway yeah well you're you're gonna make your money i i had a woman yes yesterday badgering me nonstop for um naked photo or not even naked but like artful like nudes. <laughs> artful nudes. Right? Whatever the fuck that means. Dude, wouldn't that be a hilarious turn of events? Forget about podcasting. Forget about <laughs> Just, piercing. Forget about all these other avenues. Well, Turns out you know art. there's gotta be there's money in it, but I don't know how much like you can't know until you open up that channel what you're gonna get. There's a lot of people won't right, say it. This swings right back around to the fear of leaving that hourly job to working on commission based. Yeah, it'd be even weirder changing to a commission based on selling your body on the internet. Well, and how long is she gonna find it interesting? Right, That's it's gotta right, be a yeah. novelty because she's like, this girl says to me, uh, "Well, if you don't feel comfortable posting them." Um, you can just sell them privately to me. I gladly pay. 
I'm like, God <laughs> damn, this is aggressive. Right? And on the one hand, you're flattered. Because yeah. it's like, anytime someone wants to pay you for pictures of your... <laughs> you. Yeah. Yeah. It's... But my mind goes to, what is the appetite for that? How I'm big just, is it? Because not everyone will have that communication with you. Not everyone is that forward. A lot, there's a lot of weirdos. Or not weirdos. I shouldn't say weirdos. But yeah. there's a lot of people out there that they would like that, but they don't want to admit it. Yeah, exactly. Right? Like, they want to just do their thing in private. And now where you're, where you'd be more of a niche, you know, oh, there's, for sure. there's like... I'm not Twi- general there's interest. Like, <laughs> there's like 21 year old gorgeous blonde, you know. Oh yeah. So she she's yeah. got a wide appeal. She's got a wide appeal, but there's also a lot of her. That's right. There's, there's, a there's, lot, a lot when there's not a lot of you going around, which means you can corner the market. You will have a smaller a smaller demographic, but it's just you playing that demographic now, which means you can charge a premium and you will still make more. Yeah. Than a highly active. And you know, I can get decent pictures. Like, mm. I already know this. And yeah. so the thought... Well, is, Sarah's obviously got some skills at this point. Yeah. Well, we've developed as a team, her yeah. and I, over the last four years. Yeah. It's where we started. And, and I mean it as a team, too, because she is the camera. But yeah, I have course. a vision beforehand yeah. of, like, this is what I want the photo to be. Like a prophetic vision in your yeah. sleep. And so then she's just sort of like that. Yeah. <laughs> so she's she's gotten a lot better at capturing that. Yeah, because before, like we would try and get photos, and it would be a nightmare. Like we yeah. were always just like not happy with what we, and we then the light would change, and we'd lose everything. And it was just like, <laughs> why are we bothering with this crap? Yeah, yeah. It was it was tough, but I my mind has to wonder what is the possibility of selling nudes, and what damage would it do, and how much do I care? Also, like because YouTube I think you should is, fucking try it. Well, YouTube is paying. Instagram's not paying me. Mm-mm. It's not like Mm-mm. I care. Like Instagram nope. is sort of my last priority now. Yeah. I got to tell you my TikTok is is going nuts these days and mm-hmm. all it is is me ranting at someone in my office. Is that TikTok making you money? It's not, but it's it could be yeah. potentially like the mon- you can monetize your TikTok easier Sick. than your Instagram. Sick. Well, yeah. I've had companies ask me to put their music and videos mm-hmm. and then they'll pay me a premium for that. Okay. But the only problem with that is is that Canadian and U.S. Uh, music laws are different. Ooh. So I can't get a lot of the music they'd want because no. I'm Canadian. Yeah. That's uh, Canadian silly. TikTok, all you get is like stock music. <laughs> it's like no artists. It's just stock music that you could get on any computer. <laughs> there used to be all the music you wanted, but Instagram bought that the rights to that. They have music on Instagram now for Canada, but not Incredible. TikTok. Wow. Yeah, anyway, uh, my Good TikTok kind of is... I go into my office in my house, yep. and I make up 30 TikToks in 20 minutes. Nice. And then I can post those forever. One That's of them I the made way. last week, mm-hmm. 3 million views. Wow. 10 seconds. It's just me with, you know, one of those big things that I had in my nose? Mm-hmm. Uh, that's, it's just me wearing one of those talking <laughs> without a shirt on. And it's just endlessly... You're already selling the nudes, buddy. It's just endlessly blowing up. Huh. And then that feeds my Instagram and YouTube because those links are on my TikTok page. Jeez. So it's just like... And it's hate and it's love and it's everything in between. And I don't care about any. No, goodness. Because I'm just there to reap the rewards. So that's that's where people will get offended for me when I'm getting attacked or smeared. Mm -hmm. But it's all feeding. Like you got to... If you want to be doing well on social media, you got to take both, right? Bad so. publicity is good publicity. We know exactly. that. Exactly. But um, I, I have thought about just fans quite a bit because if it's another revenue source. Yeah. Goodness. <laughs> it, it's weird. Or, or that, only fans. Oh, yeah. Only fans. Yeah. Um, but the, the niche has got to be crazy. And then I thought. Now, the, the scary thing is that to make. Because I bet you could make a fucking living off of doing that. <laughs> the co- how long? Indefinitely. Because <laughs> the thing is, you're in your only, you're, you have your own niche, your own market. Who's bumping you out? Who's squeezing you out? It's not, it's not going to be easy to do, sure. The market's going to keep growing. And, oh, oh yeah, the point I was going to make, though, is that 
to get that to actually make a living, the fastest way there is the way you don't want it, don't want to take, which is probably by just posting on your Instagram. My OnlyFans account is yeah, which yeah. is gonna lose you some followers. It's always real a red fast. flag. Like, That's oh, a, this he's cashing out. Yeah, right? he's giving up. Exactly. He's just. This is as far as I need to go. Now I'm going to be naked. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I've come to here, and now I can make my money in my bedroom. That's what That's it always it. signals to me. Of course. It's like people yeah. grow a platform to a certain size, and then they cash out somehow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which, fair enough. <laughs> which, you, you, as you right? do. That's yeah. the dream, I would think. But, like, Sarah says she's okay with all of that. But I... Well, she'll be on camera with you, dude. I, I, I don't know, like... <laughs> I don't know how cool I am with, with like I'm married. I'm a monogamous guy. Yeah. This is why I wanted to talk to you about this mm-hmm. stuff in particular, not Kevin. Yeah. Because <laughs> you have a unique perspective yeah. on all yeah. of this. Um, I don't know about the the rules there, where it's like I don't know how much access I want people having to me while I'm monogamous. Because yeah, like, yeah. you would get. You would get requests then, right? Like oh, people would be giving yeah. You requests. So you're, you're doing sexual acts for the audience. I would be doing sexual audience. acts for the audience because yeah. there's no way I keep it going without taking some suggestions, right? Yeah, people yeah, are yeah. like, put your feet in a cake, do it, you know, right? <laughs> Good example. <laughs> there's no way that you won't get stuff like that. Could you, just, better, better could be you wear big... this strange mask and jerk off, right? <laughs> just do it. Just. Just, and don't tell anyone I asked. Like that kind of a thing. Oh my goodness. You're going to get those and you're going to have to, and there'll be like a thousand dollars behind it. <laughs> like it won't be a, a poor person doing it. It'll be some wealthy, like, like really decadent rich dude that's got more money than time. And he just needs this video for some reason. <laughs> it's like a house yeah, of Yeah, he pleasures. needs it all right. Right. Like, it'll be bizarre requests because I'm already a bizarre interest. Right, right. You're like, already a b- bizarre flavor. Yeah. So, but if you can make your money doing it. So here, here's the <laughs> here's the trick. is So you, you have a partner at home. That is not a transactional relationship, right? No. So it's quite different to engage in transactional relationships that are also impersonal and then like that's not that's not really stealing a lot of intimacy away from your primary relationship to have these um a online b transactional uh c voyeuristic relationships you know Mm -hmm. i i would look at it from my own point of view a lot like what I do with the Remy character now mm-hmm. on Instagram, or it's I'm just making content. Yeah, like I would be pretty detached from it. Mm-hmm. It would take a minute to get used to being. Oh God, yeah. That uh-huh. you know, because you'd have to make a face, and you know, you would have to be. <laughs> oh, you're acting now. Yeah, you. Yeah, you're to... on camera live, and I'm not that person. I'm not that sexy smoldering guy. I'm, yeah, I'm a bit of a goof, right? Like I'm. Of course. I'm silly. I'm laughing. Now you have to be a smoke show model type guy. That's right. That's right. Or like a rugged sexual thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I've never been in that position. But um, for me, it doesn't make a difference. But only because I'm with a woman. Yeah. Right? If I was single, I would probably already have done this. You got you to... <laughs> that's a statement right there. <laughs> I, I mean, you got to make sure you really root around all the contingencies and like have that frank conversation to explain exactly what your engagement with that platform is going to look like. Mm. But once you're through that, she like, especially knowing Sarah, she might literally, cause she, she's quite a logical person. I can see in, in a lot of ways. Anyway, I'm sure she's got quite a soft underbelly too, but I can see, I can see the gears turning in her head. And I feel like if she logics her way through it and she's cool with it, she's just cool with it. I think the minute it would be cool with both of us is the first time we bought something from the money. Yeah, that's like, right. Where it's that's like, right. oh, we just upgraded our house because I did this silly photo for. <laughs> I was like, I was picturing like a, a TV or a microwave, and you're like, no, I bought a new house. Yeah, well, <laughs> she wants a new house, so. Well, you're gonna have to. <laughs> that income is not gonna work well for getting a larger mortgage. I know. How the hell do you? Uh, how the hell do you? 
with taxes, how does that work? Like, because you can't bank on it the same way. Unless you've been doing it for five years and you have something sustainable to, to show. If you do it for 24 months straight, you've got a shot. Hmm. But you've also got to remember that if... So I actually went through a very similar situation recently. So if right now you start camming and you also keep working in a kitchen or a tattoo shop for 12 months... And then, so camming's just building up during this time. Yeah. And then the following year, the following 12-month period, you just work in camming. So now you're self-employed in camming. You're only working in that. And you walk in, you say, yeah, I made X amount of dollars. They're like, okay. But the year before that, you only made this much from camming and this much from working in the restaurant. Yeah. So sure, you made this much that year, but we're only going to count this much from the camming because now you only do camming. Yeah, it would be a real change. So you especially need, like, if there was a drastic change in finances. Yeah, like, yeah. That's always kind of scared the hell out of me. What if one year you suddenly make a hundred grand, and the year before you made forty five thousand? <laughs> I mean, I've done that for sure. But <laughs> <laughs> it's just, well, how does that work? It's got to be strange. I, mean, I would think that would make them want to like look into you more. Uh, well, no, if you're paying your taxes, you're doing great. Mm. Yeah. Um. Yeah, there was there was one year where I I had been in Australia for half the year and Cambodia for half the year, something like that, and only worked you know four or five months one year, and the next year is in Fort McMurray, like working up north for like eight nine months straight, and suddenly oh, I yeah. paid as much in taxes the one year as I'd made the year previous. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, up in Fort McMurray, all you do is work, right? That's right. Exactly. That's pretty well. All like my dad worked in Slave Lake for a little while. Yep. And yeah. he would just work nonstop. Yeah. And he's making the most money he ever made. Oh, goodness. But absolutely. there was nothing to do. Yeah. I think it was yeah. just drugs and work. <laughs> just drugs and that's, work. Here we go. It. Oh, this beer too. Oh, well, you can get liquored if you want to. That's it. Um, in saying that, I would rather get out of the kitchen yeah. and get into this place and do those extracurriculars on the side, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. long run. Um, and I'm now looking for ways... Because, like, obviously, we've had endless setbacks. And my goal, I started Piercing Apprentice here in August 2019. Yeah. That's the first time I started kind of working here. Mm -hmm. So it's been a long time that this has been (laughs) sort of in motion. And even before that, there was... It feels nice to finish things sometimes. Yeah. and, and, And before that, there was endless talks with Lee about, oh, I want to get you involved somehow for, like, a year. Mm Mm-hmm. Like, so this has been sort of in motion for a long time for me where it's like, if nothing comes of this, it's going to feel like a real nothing burger of a venture. (laughs) It's like, I went through all this and I did all these things and this was a plan for this long and it was a nothing burger. never truly pulled the trigger on anything that worked out, right? Yeah, exactly. And so that's where I was ready to go to Kelowna last year when the first lockdown. Yeah. Because I was like... Well, I don't travel much. I honestly haven't gone too many places. So for me, going up there was kind of like taking a plunge. Yep. Like I'm a very, um, I'm a very adverse to risk if it doesn't make sense. Well, so if the lockdown gets extended. You should just quit your job, come and be to Kelowna for a week. <laughs> Fucking here we go. Well, I probably needed another few days hands on with Jamie, yep. and yep. I would have had what I needed here. Perfect. So take so take a surprise two weeks off. Your mom died. Uh, yeah. Go to Kelowna for a week or two. Get you learned up, and then you're taking Kevin's job. I would love to do it. Mm-hmm. Like I would really love to, because I know he wants to get into tattooing, right? Yeah, he sure is. So, but I think he's even more apprehensive than I am. Like he seems <laughs> to be. <laughs> I don't know. You're you're both. You're two peas in a pod in this situation. Yeah. You're both you're both looking to make a bit of a, a bit of a lateral move, and both of you are going, mm, maybe later. It's tough because like, I'm not saying oh you you have it easier, but in this sense you're more flexible. Yeah, exactly. you've been all over the place and you've yeah. had a million jobs. Yeah, <laughs> so we've discussed where Kevin has done retail. Mm-hmm. He's done it here and he did it at Long McQuaid. Mm-hmm. 
So it's the same job, just in a different setting in a way. That's right. There's some different elements. And me, all I've done is cooked. Yeah, you have but, a big learning curve to A, because you're coming in here to two jobs too. Yeah. You're coming in here to do piercing and you're coming in here to do our front end stuff. Mm -hmm. So that's two entire fields of scope. Yeah. Where you're walking in and be like, all right, ah, uh, this is my job now. It's very dynamic and comprehensive and yeah. I haven't played in these arenas before. I haven't played in these arenas at all. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm not worried about because like people have asked me if I'm worried about uh, interacting with the front stuff no. like that. I'm Inter like, nope. Interaction's uh, fine. Yeah, but all that bookworking, all that creating and maintaining systems to keep paperwork yeah. in the right place, of uh, different software like we have a Windows computer and a Mac computer because both of them have different functions and purposes. Yeah, your brain's got almost got to be like a uh, catalog for that yeah, stuff. Exactly. Yeah, you've kind of got to know. Oh, you want to do this? You got to head over there, open up the QuickBooks, do that through there. Oh, you want to do that scheduling thing? Well, there's this other scheduler that texts people. So if people are in the calendar, they also need to be in this. Yeah. Um, regist registry of customer information, whatever. That being said, all of that makes more sense to me in a long-term scope than cooking for another 30 years. Uh, yeah. Because well, you can't do that into your 60s. Once you've mastered a skill, yeah. What what's your plan now? There's, Time to go learn something new. I've been topped out for a decade. Ex yeah. And there are incremental progresses to be made here oh, and well, there. There's, a, there's You never learn the entirety of a subject. But, but once you've hit a saturation point... <laughs> it's It's boring and annoying for me watching other people struggle with something that's very Ugh, easy for me you're telling me man <laughs> so in electrical you'll routinely like get thrown some apprentice and he allegedly has like three years of experience he's finished his third block here we go and you like set up a task and he has some like really rudimentary questions you're like okay well here's here's exactly what i'm thinking then and you leave them to this you know you leave them to a couple hour task yeah and three days later <sighs> they're still working on it and you're like oh my god i don't I can't stand here and watch. I just need to yeah. leave and come back. Yeah, this is killing me. Because this is killing me, and we're chewing up hours of the, this job doesn't have. So we're going to let him finish this one task and send him on his way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I see people struggle with things that are really basic and mm -hmm. have been for millennia, essentially. Yeah, yeah. And I'm, I'm just like... I, I know that it's because I've been around too long. Mm -hmm. Like, I know it's a me problem yeah. and that these things actually might be difficult. Yeah. I'm just <laughs> not in it anymore. They are easy to me now. They're, yeah, and it's it's to a point of I'm not checked out because I'm mm -hmm. never doing a bad job. Yeah. But mentally, I could do everything I'm doing while I'm oh, in my sleep. Mm -hmm. And so there's never a day where it's particularly stimulating no no so the idea of doing something brand new that's compl not even anywhere near my skill set it's more than stimulating it's more than stimulating yeah right and so i've been i've been salivating over the idea of getting in and doing it but we just keep getting knocked back <laughs> <laughs> like, it seems like every time we take a step forward here. Yeah, now is not the time to become a piercer. It's not the time to become an anything. <laughs> no, it's <laughs> right? not. Cor the corona season. No, it's time to become essential. It's time to become yeah. a garbage man <laughs> yeah. or a fucking posty. Yeah. Or, like, you need, it's time to become or a lab tech or a nurse or a hand sanitizer maker. Or it's it's time to become something essential that doesn't just get knocked out every time something yeah, really happens. Yeah, because pretty well any any career advancement that you'd want to do in a non-essential field is off limits right now. Yeah, don't even bother. Like, I, Unless you're a real estate agent. They're think, making bank right now. So, like, if you had have started tattooing in 2020, like, can you imagine how, how screwed up that would have been? God just a mess like timing is a bitch i've always said this but you can have everything else but if you don't have timing you've got nothing well you've been kind of lining up to like make decent money this year hopefully but then we started the year on a fucking lockdown mm -hmm. first weeks of 2021 lockdown yeah and i thought it was the last one not just kidding may also lockdown i think we're gonna have one more but i think i do but I hope I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. I'm usually like, and I'm, this is not egocentric at all, but I'm usually pretty right with this stuff. Yeah, I've been calling yeah. these all along, mm -hmm. and I really want to be wrong. Like when I I said to Kevin, 
you guys are going to lock down again last time. He was annoyed because he knew that it was probably going to happen. That's right. Even though there was no announcement about it. Mm -hmm. It's just the news cycle seemed to be trending that way. Oh, did it ever. And I worry that that's going to happen to us again. And that's where I'm like, if you're a tattoo artist in this city, I would say booking two months at the most for the rest of the year. That's (laughs) exactly right. Or else you're going to end up screwing yourself up again. Yeah. Like, that would be my advice. Here we are. Because we can barely see what's going to happen next week right now. Mm-hmm. At the end of at the end of the last lockdown, were you caught you were, up? You were here while Kevin and I. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You were here when Kevin and I were having our like conversation of what do we do with this schedule? What's our yeah, fucking yeah, plan remember. here, boys? <laughs> God, like an hour of back and forth. Yeah. How do we do this? How do we reopen? Yeah, that's right. How are we going to rebook these people? Mm-hmm. I'm gonna be way less stressed about it this time. I'm still gonna take a few people from June and bounce them back to the end of the schedule but otherwise like i've kept a few spaces open i know not to pack my schedule too tight anymore so i think it'll be just fine this time i think what this has shown a lot of the world is because a lot of people thought and i know we're going to see some long-term effects still with the economy Mm -hmm. obviously and and we're still having things run out randomly like we were out of um what was it? Ice tea was gone for six months a few months ago. <laughs> Poor Terry. He wouldn't like, do well in that environment. What? Why is this out? <laughs> like, just certain things are going to be like that for Well, a some long of them time. are just shipping delays, too. Yeah. Some of them are just that one factory that got hit yep. too hard. So the one factory just closed. Exactly. There's going to be weird stuff like that for years to come. Just, just like beef is still more expensive right now because when this all started, our beef processing plants got hit here and in the u.s so like a bunch of cows just didn't get slaughtered on time Mm -hmm. or died or whatever and now we just have we're just still feeling it's like dominoes right like every little thing gets affected and then it's a ripple effect you don't see those effects up front but what is it there's a type of wood right now that's skyrocketed in value all wood is it all wood yeah i bought two two by fours last week for a small project yeah $10 $10 a fucking two by four. <laughs> $10 for an Good thing eight it was a foot, small project. Yeah, $10 for an eight foot two by four. Where it should be 320 Yeah. Yeah, like he's just openly crazy for no reason. Well, this is like I had, um, I have these Bowflex adjustable weights mm-hmm. that I got when my dad passed away, actually. Yeah. He had them. And, and they're worth $900 now. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, they're, they're expensive as fuck. Um, I don't love using them because mm-hmm. they're bulky. Yeah. So like, I'd rather use just regular dumbbells. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I went to order some regular twenty-pound dumbbells, <laughs> and they're fifty bucks now. Holy shit! Yeah. Yeah. And hard to find too. I bought water fillable ones because I was like, I'm not even dealing with this crap. <laughs> they're like hard. They're almost impossible to find a set. Yep. Like everyone thought they, they were gonna get buff. I went into Walmart the other day. They finally have them back in stock at Walmart. But it's like $4 a pound for your dumbbells now. Yeah. Just crazy. Yeah, it's insane it's how like many $75 people... $75 for a dumbbell? This well, is insane. I mean, I get where it comes from. Oh, yeah. Because I bought a treadmill at the start of the first lockdown. Because I was like, if I'm not going to be running around the kitchen 40,000 steps a day, I am going to get huge. Yeah. Because like you're huge by the treadmill. Well, I've been having a... Uh, cardio workout every day of my life, basically, for that's right. my whole adult life. And now that's going to stop. <laughs> so I need to do something in my house. And uh, I did use it for that whole first lockdown, but afterwards I realized that just treadmill is not really that good. Like my older brother Dave is, um, he's a real big fitness guy. Mm-hmm. And he was like, oh no, you don't want to be doing that every day. Because I was running 100 minutes a day. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah, like 25, yeah. 30. Yeah. He's like, why are you doing that? Yeah, 100 like, minutes. It's like, oh, well, I don't want to get out of shape. He's like, yeah, but you got to do some other stuff. A lot of other stuff. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, so maybe not treadmill for 100 minutes a day. Yeah, you got to at least uh, do throw some push-ups in there, mm-hmm. some squats, and some crunches, and some chin-ups. Push-ups, crunches, squats, chin-ups. And then if it's once the weather's nice, you go outside, you do your lunges. Lunges are super key for keeping on stuff like stretched, good range of motion, and strengthened. Well, I 
I do an average of 25 minutes a day every day now. Mm -hmm. I'd like to get up to half an hour, but I I, I don't want to make it so much that I find it. That's like, it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't want to find it is bothering my day too much. Mm -hmm. Like, but I need to do something consistently. Anyway, what I wanted to get to about what we've learned through the coronavirus lockdowns is um, the world wasn't as fragile as we thought it was, or a lot of people thought it was. Mm -hmm. Like, it has gone through hiccups. Yeah. And even I thought it was more fragile than it is mm -hmm. because I went to my lowest point financially ever in the last decade yeah. by the end of last year. Yeah. I was in I was in turmoil over it. I was like, I can't believe how much I've been devastated by this. But I'm twice where I was then now. Yeah. So yeah. like a lot of things are floating. Yeah. Like yeah. it's kinda okay. Even though I I would have imagined myself at this point at the three lockdowns mm -hmm. dead. Like, yeah. done. Bankrupt. I just, I, I just died. Well, like, just, at least bankrupt. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, like, if you were to pitch this scenario to me... But so you didn't lose your job. No. But I, I did... Much. I was down for the first one. Yeah. But that was on me. Like, yeah. Like, that was actually on me. And, and how I mean to say is, like, uh, my job was open, but I was expecting them to call me. Because, mm -hmm. like, I've been around for a long time. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I was, like, I was waiting for the call. And I was too stubborn to call them. Yeah, yeah. And, and to be I, like, yo, what's up? And I think they thought I didn't care. Or like I was like... <laughs> this is crazy. I was fine to be unemployed or s mm -hmm. take the break or something. Because like I, I figured that out on my own. Because at the start of the second lockdown, I was immediately in there like, I want to work. Just give me whatever I can. Yeah. And they were more than happy. Well, you, you didn't take a full three-month lockdown the first time around. Was it more like six weeks? Mm, two months. Okay. I was off for the whole duration. Oh, fair. Crazy. Yeah. I did. That was the only time I got the Serb. Jeez. Because, um, I, again, like I said, I, I was just in shock the first time. Yeah. And I didn't really know how to react. Yeah, yeah. Because that was the first time in my life I've been without That's work. That's when you started the clip where we reacts. Yeah. So now you know how to react. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, we started doing the podcast and everything then. Yeah. Because Kevin yeah. and I were both out of work. And was that the one the podcast started? Yeah. Well... So Lee has been on me to do the podcast for years. Yeah. Because he and I would talk and he'd be like, we should be on camera right now. This is a good conversation. People <laughs> would like this. And I was like, no, oh, no one wants to listen to us talk. Yeah, yeah. Right? And so finally when both of us are unemployed, Kevin and I, Lee was at both of us like, yeah, this is the time. Done. Get it done. Use the shop. Set it all up. We got couches. We got... Uh, just get some mics, you know? Mm -hmm. He he video chatted with us while we were setting up for the first one. Mm -hmm. We did, I think we did four podcasts. So it was just you and Kevin for the first one, eh? Yeah, we did the first five. Cool. And then I, then I had you on for yeah. the sixth one. Yeah. But we did four podcasts before we aired one. There was four podcasts done that didn't work for one reason or another. Like, like technical issues and stuff. Technical issues. Oh, my and, goodness. Or else we, we, there was one where we... Our conversation was terrible. <laughs> like, it was just like... It's hard to imagine, though. Like, oh, yeah, you just have a conversation that bad. Well, if you watch the first Remy show, it's really stiff. Well, I like, would assume, yeah. Like, um, we're very uh, almost rehearsed. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it's not because we were rehearsed. It was yeah. like we've had this same conversation on other podcasts already, right. but differently. Yeah. So, like... A lot of the topics we talked about the first four goes came up in that fifth first podcast that aired, mm -hmm. but it had been rehashed in different ways. And even the way we're sitting, we're sitting really proper. Yeah. And we're very I, quiet and calm. I remember my first time podcasting with you. <laughs> I remember sitting here going, oh yeah, we're just locked in like this now. And this this is the whole plan. Here we are. Yeah. And, and this is actually a little bit reminiscent of it, except you can just tell from the tension in our voices you can tell from our body language that we're completely relaxed now well it's different because um where i knew kevin for years yeah you and i had talked a bit but, but never had an actual conversation so when we're starting out it's like okay i don't know this guy let's yeah. get to know this we're guy. we're basically strangers here we're acquaintances <laughs> yeah. let's roll which i would like to do more of but this hasn't been the best time obviously with corona <laughs> to bring new people You're not bringing people into your four-foot bubble here because when we originally started this out, it was like, 
oh, well, we'll have different guests all the time. And then it ended up <laughs> Just being, kidding, we're starting in a pandemic. Yeah, right? we're, we're just talking to the same guys all the yep. time. And that's okay. But, Probably could have brought Ronan in today. Yeah, that would have been interesting. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking about as soon as you, you you never even met her, have you? No, but as oh, soon wow. as you mentioned the like I didn't see your text till I got here because yeah. I was driving Sarah to work mm-hmm. and morning stuff. Um I was like, Oh, I know how I would start that podcast. I don't know where it would go. Yeah. But like I have a good basis for it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so definitely How'd you start a podcast with a stranger? With Rowan? Well, with you two in particular, I would mm-hmm. want to talk about your relationship dynamic a oh, bit shit, more. Oh, shit, fair. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> because it fascinates me. Yeah, yeah. And then I mean that from a level of respect, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. We because like I've said to on. you before, I wish I could get there because it makes more sense to me. Even though we're a shit example now because... You're living more... Well, well, we're, <clears throat> we bought a house together now. <clears throat> Everything's way more nuclear. Uh, and primarily with the pandemic, we're not just like out dating. Mm-hmm. You know, that just seems silly right now. Well, how- and, and we're both a bit too busy. She had a crazy job until quite recently. Um, my work life is nuts enough with, if I spare time, I'm not going to be out dating randos. I'm going to be, you know, working on the sump pump in the yeah. basement, getting everything straight down there. Fair enough. See, my my thinking on it is always like, that makes more sense to me. Yeah. But emotionally, yeah. I'm married to this idea of... uh a man and a woman that's right you know what i mean like it's it's definitely like a disneyification of my brain where mm-hmm. i know that that's in there and i can't do anything with it but it doesn't really intuit as the right way to yeah. be where, well <laughs> and that's all that's all well and good but a lot of negative can come from that especially especially when you start getting some weird jealousy in there there's there's a lot of people who simply can't maintain a friendship with someone of the opposite sex because their partner will go nuts, right? So this is like the opposite of that where, oh yeah, you, you have dude friends? Sweet, get after it. Um, is there gonna be a sexual relationship here? Well, let's talk about that. That's, that's not off the table. That can totally be part of the game. Yeah, how does that work? So like, what do you need for that? I right, want to pull this apart. Right now, I'd be high fucking maintenance. Yeah. Because right now, it's <laughs> it's been basically a year since either of us have done anything in that field, right? So I'd be like, it'd be a, it'd be a mental shift. You gotta you gotta take your time and think it through because because we are in a culture surrounded by classic monogamy, so it's easy to just settle into that. You know, most of my buddies are are married and hanging out. We're camping. It's very there's lots of couples, et cetera, right? Yeah. Most people, yeah. You know what I'm trying to say. So to break away from that and think about my partner, my girl, my woman, whatever you want to call it, being with someone else intimately, that's a fucking, that, that can hit the heartstrings pretty hard. You got to mm-hmm. like take a minute and pause and f- actually work through that for a second mm-hmm. before you can go ahead without it kind of being a problem. My jealous little man would be she's gonna find this guy better than me and move on and then no, all see, of a sudden i'll be the other guy no see this is where i want yeah, yeah, your see, that's never my issue no what is your nah I'm, I'm never worried about my person my partner like leaving i don't think that's like so i may have communicated it a little different i don't think that's consciously what i'm thinking no no i no. just think that that's the little man but, but right? i am like, i am conscious of the little man because like <laughs> i do, i do what the, I, do, I don't call him the little man what do i call him um Either way, the oh, I had a term for this because I used it recently. Whereas, like, the shitty little man. Anyway, the the little the little man inside me has a different fear. The little man inside of me more has a fear of like, like Lethbridge is a small town. Yeah. The the <clears throat> unnecessary low road worry I get is more like, you know, you you work your way in the dating scene in this town a little bit, and all of a sudden I'm 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 out with my friends and Rowan and she's kind and like uh, she has a reputation of being loose. So there's a couple of guys there who've like, Oh, we both tagged her. Ha ha ha. Oh yeah. Or some shit like that. Right. Or and it's again, not that's respectful. That's right. Yeah. And that's still a little man worry. Whereas like they're looking at the person that I spend so much of my time and effort and energy on as being a throwaway or not, 
as valuable, right? Right. Like or, if the or, grades are, or we're we're so, or we're suddenly I'm the chump. I don't See, want. I don't want to be the chump. I want to hold my head high and fucking feel good about my decisions and lifestyle, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I've had the joke of like these sorts of relationships where it's like it's one way where it's okay if the man does it, but then the woman does it and the man gets that's upset. Right. Um, do you do you guys do you think you're on an even footing with it? Yeah, reasonably. She she thinks I'm tougher than I am. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so she's got lots of balls. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> And I'm like, slow down. Mm. Um, but also when we met, she had gotten out of uh, a monogamous relationship and was doing a little bit of experimenting. So when we were first, and at, and at first, like when I first meet a girl, I'm very much like, yeah, I'm probably leaving to go travel the world. So don't even worry about me. So don't I'm a little bit. attached. Yes. Yeah. And I've, I've actually lost or not lost, but I've, I've fucked things up before with girls I really like when I first meet them. Because I'll like. I've scared a couple girls away before when I've shown a little bit of interest. So I'll just like play it super cash, super way too chill. Um, and that, that gives a signal of like, I don't care. Like I accidentally aloof. give a signal of, I don't care too mm-hmm. aloof. And then they're out running around up to all kinds of shit. Um, and Roan was, when I met Roan, she was seeing like several people kind of thing, not on super regular basis, but on a regular enough basis that, I came along and I was like, wow, I got, I got to play it super chill here, um, to be respectful of her lifestyle. And she kind of, so she kept up a pretty active lifestyle for the first few months there. Mm -hmm. And after a while I was like, okay, well this, this is kind of a lot actually. Like let's, we were getting, we were getting tested and using the right right protection, all kinds of things. But still after a while I'm like, hey, whoa, whoa, we gotta slow the fuck down. A few too many dudes and fellas. That's it. There's a lot going on here. (laughs) Yeah, I uh I've always been wary myself of and this is coming from my point of view, when I see there's too many dudes and fellas, it's like a it's a red flag for me as a monogamous guy where I'm like I don't trust the the footing. Well and I'm getting into a relationship with a girl and she's got like, Oh, this is this is Larry, and he does this thing with me, and this is Phil, and he does yeah. this thing. I'm like, whoa, yeah. whoa, 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 whoa. Like, I want to be doing these things, and I want to be the only one doing these and things. And this is such a dynamic topic <laughs> because you start <clears throat> you start breaking it down from there, and then you start getting the safety aspect of you yeah. know keeping everyone happy and healthy here. Then you get into the, the time portion of it. And right now, that's where I'm like, man, we, I'm kind of – We've had a couple of preliminary conversations that I'm still going to kind of put on the table of we kind of need to stick to something a little more monogamous because mm-hmm. right now I'm way too busy, man. I've had two and a half weeks off already and I haven't had a spare moment to breathe. Right. Besides, I had a couple camping trips that did give me a chance to breathe. But otherwise, like, the whole yeah, time yeah. I'm here, <laughs> let's go. I still have a bunch of projects I'm not going to get to in this time. Yeah, I know that. I know that feeling. I don't have a whole lot of free time. I yeah. Almost every day. I've got something going on. Yeah. So, like, the idea of having time for two women is... Ex- yeah. <laughs> it's, it's hard insane. for me to budget. It's just insane. I mean, I would really have to want that. Yeah. Like, it would have to be a burning hot passion for me. hmm Because mm-hmm. as... And I'm not saying I'm not sexually active with my wife when I yeah, say this. Yeah. But sometimes it's hard to even fit that into a day. That's right. Sometimes <laughs> you're like... <gasps> I don't know. I don't, I'm, yeah. I'm kind of tired. I don't really care right now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's it's. I'm not in any way apathetic towards her. It's just mm-hmm. like, especially we're now. I'm working evenings right now, and she's working mornings. We're kind of like missing each other a lot. So when I get home at eight or nine, you know, we want to hang out. Mm-hmm. We want to do that stuff, but there isn't always time for me to eat, shower, that's the have thing. that personal time. You know, warm up a little bit. You can't just come home and go open up. Here I am. Yeah. Right. Like that's no way to romance a woman. You got to have some sort of fucking connection here. Yeah, exactly. You can't just walk in and expect sex. So Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the idea of me right now, especially when you're like, let's have sex right now because I know you want it and need it. Yeah. Like, whoa, hold on. Yeah, that's not how that's not how girls work. Yeah, that's no, <laughs> not a she may want it and need it. That's not how this works. You gotta rev the engine a little first, right? That's right. That's and right. The idea of me doing that with two people right now, or Ugh. more than two people, um, 
it's not a knock on that lifestyle. I almost have an admiration for the people who are able to sustain that. Yeah. We have a, well, we don't right now, mm -hmm. but uh, Kalu, um, uh, Nepalese dishwasher at work, mm -hmm. he has four wives. Wow. He's a little, he's a short 65-year-old yeah. Nepalese dude Jeez. who just struts around like the cock of the walk. He knows a, a ton about everything. Mm -hmm. Like he, he know like something will break and he'll just know how to fix it. <laughs> I don't know what he did in Nepal, but he wasn't a dishwasher. No, no. Like certainly. this guy is well above his pay grade. Yeah. And I guarantee you he's funding something in Nepal with his money he's making here. And four wives somehow. And he has this huge three hundred thousand dollar house here in town. But his whole family lives with him. But yeah, he has four wives. That's still weird. And uh I don't know how he manages it. <laughs> like he says to me, you wife, kids? I say, yes, wife, kid. Oh, very good. Me for wife. <laughs> I have a big grin on his face. And I'm like, how the hell do you keep them all happy? Yeah, what's your plan, boys? Yeah, like I don't Jeez. know how you do that. Because like I can barely manage time for one right now. Yeah, yeah, and, precisely. And, and that sounds harsh, but it's true. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when you're in a long, dedicated relationship... I think it's natural that your partnership can take a bit of a back seat. Yeah. But you have to be able to check in on it while it's in that Good. position. Goodness. Yeah. Because right yeah. now, like, we had a conversation, her and I, mm -hmm. last night where it's like, I don't like doing this lifestyle, like, where she's working mornings, I'm working nights, and we yeah. rarely see each other. Yeah. And then when we do, my son is there. And mm -hmm. yeah, you, you only see each other on the weekends, and the whole time, yep. Ivan's hanging out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so... There's not much time for personal time between the two of us. No. And so last night we had a bit of a heart dart about, you know, I miss you. Yeah. I don't want you to think I don't miss you. This lifestyle sucks for us when we're That's at ends right. like this. Fitting more. <laughs> it's crazy to me. <laughs> like that's It's crazy to me that, like, I can't even imagine having another partner. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I, I got to have a think and, and figure out what the heck I want and how the heck to go forward with that. I see like a girl in Calgary I see once every three months, you know? Yeah. Just just enough to call myself just, Polly and not, well, just and not take my time. Almost like um like a vacation <laughs> resort or yeah, something, yeah. right? Um that being said, and so here we'll go a little farther, if you were in that situation, um, would you still when you're with another woman be like communicating with your partner like the whole time kind of thing? So like Say you slept with a woman mm -hmm. outside of your relationship. Mm -hmm. Next day you wake up in bed. Do you still text, good morning, I love you? Kind of, or oh, it, yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I'm just, I'm trying to understand well, the particulars. And, or you're is it really? and you're especially texting like, hey, P.S., got laid last night. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of communication. Yeah. yeah. See, I think a lot of people think that there's less communication. Well, th there is sometimes that typically like, at least for me, if if my if my biggest concern as far as the negatives go here is like I don't want to feel like a chump, that means I kind of got to be in the know. Mm -hmm. like, tell me what's up. Yeah, fair. Yeah, I I find the whole topic absolutely fascinating, and mm -hmm. I think that if I if I could build myself from the ground up with none of my own baggage, mm -hmm. I think I would probably go with more of an approach like that. Yeah. Um, because anytime I get into the, the details, it just makes more sense that yeah. humans were meant to just do this. But in the, in this culture, it's harder. <clears throat> it's much harder to carry on that lifestyle mm -hmm. than just go monogamous and go along with it, mm -hmm. right? It's much harder to maintain multiple relationships and continue to continue to meet new women when you're like, no, I already found what I like and all the new ones I meet, I don't give a fuck about and they make me want to walk away, right? Like, that's, and especially as a guy in this town, like in this town, this is a very monogamous, coupley town. You want to meet yeah, you some, gotta have a you want to meet some new girls in this town, you're pool. picking from the bottom of the barrel here. How many times is it going to be a deal breaker when you're like, by the way? Oh, <laughs> yeah, plus there's, plus there's that. Especially yeah. that culture in this town where you're like, good luck meeting, uh, cool girl who's also attractive and has her life together and is down that you own a home with a woman it's yeah finding a unicorn at that point yeah 